Well, praise the Lord and welcome to my porch. And I just wanted to take this time just to sit down and talk to you about some things that I think that are pressing in our world today. And you need to pay attention to what's going on, especially the things that are going on concerning the end of the age. And so, you know, a few days ago, I was just, just thinking about the things that are transpiring in our world today. And I'm telling you right now, I mean, even the most godly men walking this planet today could find themselves in a situation whereby they are really concerned about our planet, concerned about society, concerned about governments, also concerned about the state and the welfare of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so with that in mind, I just want to take about five minutes just to share some things with you that I think that we need to really pay very close attention to because we have entered into a new period in time, not only as far as our government here in the United States, but we have entered into a new period of time that I believe is the opening of the seals. And so after I talk about what I talk about, you may come to the same conclusion. You know, I know there are people that are saying that, you know, I don't think that the seals are open yet and that's about to come. But really, if we look at the signs that Jesus taught us in the scripture in Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 13, I'm, I'm sorry, in Mark chapter 13 and Luke chapter 21, you will come to the same consensus that something is different than it was some years ago. In fact, people said one time before, you know, you think things are going back to normal? And I believe that we are never going back to the normal. We are going to go into a state of, of the world that is going to make your head spin. So let's talk about some of the things. I took the time to write some things down that were going on. You know, what are we seeing now on our planet? You know, we're seeing for number one, food shortages. We, we've heard of this before. You know, the Bible talks about in the, in, in the last days there's going to be a famine. And he talked about not necessarily a famine of bread and water, but a famine of the hearing of the word of God. And one of the things that I talked about in one of my earlier videos is that I believe that we have entered into a time whereby everybody so-called have a word. Every preacher have a word. You can go on the TV. You can go on the Internet, and, you know, on YouTube. You can go on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all of these different things. And, and, and you can find all of the ministers have a word from God. And the thing about it is, is that right now uh, people are even leery about hearing about prophecies. And simply because, you know, during the presidential uh, elections, a lot of the prophets were prophesying that Trump was going to win another election. And it didn't turn out that way. And so now we have people that are in the church and outside of the church saying, oh, man, we leery about hearing about prophecy and all that kind of stuff like that. And so they're just not listening to the prophets anymore. But for you who are in the church, remember, God tells us despise not prophesying. He told us don't despise it, but he did tell us to judge the prophecies. And one way we can judge the prophecies to know whether it's of God or not, we have to wait in prophetic timing to see whether the thing come to pass or not. And he said, if it doesn't come to pass, then you don't have to fear that prophet. You don't even have to fear the word that he spoke because he's spoken falsely and not from God. The second thing in prophecy, you got to judge the fruit of the individual. Listen, if people around prophesying and prophesying for money and gain and everything like that, well, we know already that's the Balaam spirit and it's prophesying the things of Balaam. I didn't want to take the time to talk about too much about prophecy and, and you know, the absence of the word of God. But there are a lot of people right now are not hearing what the true voice of the Lord is saying today. And so they're still running after things, still running after houses and lands and cars and boats and, and all kinds of jewelry, silver and gold and everything like that, not realizing that, listen, your money's not going to save you in the day of God's judgment. And so I want you to be very, very careful about what you're listening to. Feed on the word of God. Get into the scriptures. Go back to Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, especially because those are the words of Jesus. And we need to be very familiar with what Jesus has said, because once we get familiar with what Jesus said, nobody can come along and dupe us. No one can trick us. Or Jesus warned about deception in the last days. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about again about deception. The second thing I talked about in this, when I said food shortages, you know, there's something going on right now. You know, when you start messing with the chicken, you're in trouble. <laughs> so, you know, the prices of chicken is going up simply because there's a lack of chicken and a lack of food. You know, food prices are going up. If you haven't noticed yet, uh, we are seeing inflation. And there's a word that I heard the other day someone use it, it called. Um, it talks about when they actually uh, make the, the, the packages smaller 
and and the the price stays the same and so that's that's a type of inflation so what's happening you're paying more for less and so as a result um, this is what's going on but one of the things that I like to suggest that you do in these times of inflation or um, uh, just learn how to live on less and what I mean when I say that you know like for instance you might want to consider right now learning and tr to train your body how to survive on one meal a day or maybe you may fast a day out of the week and don't eat that way your, your demand for intake for food uh, would be less and therefore you don't have to demand a whole lot of you're training your body to do something you've never done before listen these are critical times in which we're living and we need to learn how to be as wise as serpents but harmless as doves so therefore that's all I'm gonna say about that then we talk about the weird and the wicked weather patterns <laughs> three W's weird wicked weather patterns man I'm telling you now we've seen tornadoes We've seen straight line winds. We've seen hailstorms. I'm telling you the truth. I looked at a video the other day. Uh, there was an eight, eight pound hailstone in Texas. You know, we're seeing a lot of that. You look on YouTube and you see all of these different um, uh, uh, things that, with extreme lightning. I mean, lightning is just like it's going crazy. I mean, lightning that I've never seen before. We've survived some lightning storms here in Florida, but I'm trying to tell you now, what I've been seeing is extreme. And then the severe winters, one of the things that the Lord said is gonna happen, you don't find it in the King James Version, but he talks about how it was gonna be extreme winters before the return of the Lord. Major flooding, oh my God. You know, when you see rain flooding Saudi Arabia in the desert, come on, something's going on. You know, and the major flooding here in the United States, um, you know, uh, Tennessee, um, Kentucky, different places like that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Texas as well and they're experiencing a lot of abundance of rain and deluges and as a result we see major floodings and natural disasters of biblical proportions you know all of these things are happening right here in our world and so we've got to take note to know that there's something going on and we need to pay very close attention and we need to get prepared for what's coming because once again uh, when jesus talks about the birth pains one thing about the birth pains of a woman that's in labor uh, it's going to get more frequent and it's going to get more intense. You know, it may start, start out five minutes apart and it'll get to four and then three and two. And then it'll begin, to, it's time to have the baby. So you need to understand right now we're in the birth pains. The whole earth is groaning and travailing, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Then we have earthquakes and volcanic eruptions all over the planet. One time, at, at one time, there were 52 volcanoes going off at the same time in the world across the planet and then we know about earthquakes happening Jesus said it will happen in diverse places that means various places we're seeing earthquakes happen in places that we didn't even realize there was a fault zone there and so the earth is shaking and it's trembling why because of the sin of people this earth is crying out to be delivered from the bondage of corruption according to the Bible in the book of Romans and then we have fires that are going on all over the planet I mean you know Australia is experiencing severe fires and things like that and all over the planet we see fires that are breaking out and lightning strikes that are starting fires because there's drought all over the place and so when there's no rain everything dries up and then when the lightning strikes it burns and <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about I mean I'm just getting just kind of like fatigued just listening to all I'm talking to you about all of this stuff but it is happening and then we see race wars happening up uh, uh, race wars where nations against nations, ethnic groups against ethnic groups, blacks against whites, against Hispanics, against Asians and things like that. It's happening all over the planet. And so we have movements that are out right now. One, one race uh, uh, saying that, hey, listen, we are superior to uh, the, all the races. And then you have another race that's saying, hey, listen, our lives matter too. Every race matter. God created all the races. And so therefore, we need to learn as body, the body of Christ and believers, don't buy into that stuff to pit us against another race. Listen, God made all men and created us all equal. And so therefore, you need to respect the other races. I don't care what their religious beliefs are. You respect them because they are human. They are made in the image and the likeness of God. So therefore, we need to take these things under considerations and stop allowing the media to drag us into a war, drag us into a battle that Jesus did not call us to fight.
And so therefore, we see destruction and the failing of governments, destabilization of governments because of political corruption. Look at Venezuela and some of the other countries that have fallen, Yemen, uh, different uh, uh, countries that have fallen. Look at Syria, uh, the battles and the wars that are raging in that place or whatever, simply because of corruption. Um, men, when they want to take more than what's allotted to them and they desire to make themselves rich and they want to do it on the backs of God's people, guess what? That is the destabilization of a nation because of corruption. And the Bible tells us that corruption is in the world because of lust or greed. And so as a result, we need to make sure that we're watching what's going on because you know what? Before long, it'll happen here in America. Then we talk about UFOs, unidentified flying objects, you know, things that are going on in the sky, in the cosmos. We're looking in the, in the, in the, the Bible call it the Shamaim, things that are happening in the heavens. Jesus said fearful sights will happen in the heavens. And so therefore, you know, people are, are now uh, discovering that all the time before the theories about UFOs, they are actually true. NASA's just uh, released some publications about uh, 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 classified documents concerning UFO sightings and how the military had to deal with uh, uh, unidentified flying objects that do things that are virtually impossible for our military uh, jets and planes to do in the sky. And so as a result, we see these things that are happening right now. I don't think that it's going to be long where they announce that, you know, they have come in contact with the UFOs and very soon aliens will begin to appear. We know that they are demons and, and you know, uh, different, um, uh, well, you know, you know, that's what we know they are. They're not aliens from another planet. They're demons that are masquerading. And this is going to be a part of the great deception that is coming in days to come. Then we talk about plagues and pestilence and pandemics all over the world, all the plan. Yeah, I don't even have to talk about that right now as I'm sitting here on my porch. Uh, we're still going through the pandemic of the COVID-19 crisis. And so as a result, we need to know that Jesus talked about plagues and pestilence will happen in the last days. So these are fulfilling the things that Jesus told us would happen. Wars and fighting. Right now, if I sit down and talk to you, Israel and Gaza, or actually Israel fighting against Hamas in the Gaza Strip, that has been going on for quite some time. The last time this has happened, they had a, such an escalation of violence in it between Israel and Gaza. It was in 2014. Seven years later, guess what? We're at it again. They are, they are bombing one another. Uh, Hamas is shooting rockets in, in Israel in the Escalon and Tel Aviv and even in Jerusalem, they are aiming to, uh, to, to destroy the Israelites. But let me tell you something, folks. Uh, we, we, we're not, we're not going to see that happen. We're not, not now. We're not going to see that happen because God will defend Israel. God will defend Jerusalem. Amen. And that's what he promised and he will do that. And so uh, that's on the rise. We see not only that, um, the threats of war, just a few maybe weeks ago, we saw Russia an intense escalation against Ukraine. And guess what? They were getting ready to go at an all out war. Russia was amassing troops off the Ukrainian border. And these are the things that are happening. You know, we, see, we hear about the, uh, the things that are going on with, with North Korea. And now we're, we're not no longer in talks with North Korea. And now they're beginning their threats again. We see uh, Iran, threatening Israel and Israel uh, uh, threatening Iran are saying that we will retaliate. We're seeing the wars in Syria all over the place and that's not even talking about the fighting that we are seeing in the streets of America and nations all around the world. I'm almost through. But here it is. The Bible talks about deception. Deception is on a worldwide scale beginning with the media. Yes, I said it. The media, the mainstream, lamestream media that are giving us false information and false narratives. And they are, people don't know now what to believe because they're believing the spin that the, the media wants you to understand or what you did want you to believe. But folks, we've got to look into the Bible and we got to see that Jesus told us that the, the times are going to come when deception is going to come, not only from the world, but it's going to come from people within the church. And so therefore we must be on God. There's going to be persecution that's going to come to the church and it's going to be like nothing we've ever seen before. A lot of times we talk about the rapture and Jesus is going to come and take us away before all these things happen. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, Jesus may not come and these things may take place as well and they're going to escalate, but we need to be ready and we need to be prepared. And then we see the breakdown of morality. You know, um, uh, children right now don't know whether they're male or female because 
you know, we're seeing uh, a, a lot of communities right now that, 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 that wants their rights in there. Uh, they want to be able to marry whoever they want to be married to. You know, if a man wants to marry the sea, he can do that. You know, marry wants to marry a dog, he can do that. You know, all of these crazy things that are going on. And I'm telling you right now, Jesus said that's in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, that's what's going to be what's happening in the last days. But let me say to you folks, the thing that you and I need to do, we need to look up and lift up our eyes for our redemption draw nigh. And our redemption is not a, an event, our redemption is a person, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand that there's no such thing as redemption without a redeemer. Jesus is the one who owns us, who bought us, who secured our redemption. So he's going to split the eastern sky and he's gonna come back for the one whom he redeemed. Deemed. He paid the price for us to be his bride. And he's going to come back for those who washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Have you done so, my friend? Have you washed your robes? Listen, it's time for us to get intentional about our walk with Christ. It's time for us to get out of the, out of the Facebooks and the YouTubes and all of the videos and all of the stuff like that and our devices that we so enamor ourselves with and we need to get into the Word of God and find out what the Word of God has to say for us in these last days. There is a word from the Lord. Yes, there is a shortage, there is a famine and there's a famine of the hearing of the Word of God. But those that get into the Word of God, into their Bibles and dig for the treasures that Jesus said that's in there, guess what? We're gonna find it. And when Jesus comes, guess what? We're going to be the ones who are ready to hear the bride say, come up hither. And when he says that, my God, we're going to be going home to be with the Lord. Then the earth will go through the tribulation. And at the end of the tribulation, the saints of God with Jesus, we will come back and rule and reign with him. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video clip. I don't know, I tried to make it as five minutes, but I just wanted you to hear some of the things that the Lord has placed on my heart. And so God bless you. Until next time, this is Kenneth Dentley reminding you of 1 John 4 and 4. Ye of God, little children, you've overcome the world because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Shalom. Until next time.